Is he? I was in the backyard one day and mum was like, no, dad, mum was hanging out the clothes and dad was next to me and dad turned to me and said, okay, you're a man now. I was like, I was like seven years old. <laughs> <laughs> you're a man now. And because you're a man, we're not calling you Izzy anymore. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Gerard Lai, and I'm a deacon. G'day, my name's Isaac, and I'm also a deacon. Hi, I'm uh, Deacon Minje, and uh, our three of us are going to be ordained to the Presbyterate in June 2023. So what's going to happen is we're going to react to a video. Our, our mums have been asked a series of questions. We don't know what the questions are, so we're going to read the questions, we're going to see the questions, and then we're going to react to how our, the answers that our mums say as well. Average. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Gerard is probably average or above. I don't know. I reckon I'm a good cook. <laughs> really? I just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I put my mind into the cooking mm. realm, I reckon I can pull mm. something off. We, we have, but I just yeah. don't ever go there. Mm, yeah, <laughs> like interesting to hear the word average. Where it can de uh, depend on what she defined uh, average means. Yeah, but let's see. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was interesting. I like to put a lot of effort into cooking because for me it's fun and it's kind of like a science year mixing random things together, mm -hmm. but often I just follow a recipe, so. Mm. And then you have to feed other people with it, so you, you wanna make it edible first, and then you wanna mm. make it semi-decent, so. Mm. Uh, after a few years of doing that, hopefully you're a bit average or above average. Yeah, all mothers are professional cook anyway, <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. What's next? <laughs> I'm not sure about that. It used to be spaghetti, but I, I, it might have changed by now. Well, with Gerard, it's random because he likes to try new things. It has changed. Really? Yep. Yeah, it has changed. Mm. I like cooking chicken now. Chicken. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Succulent chicken. Oh, it's like, a, did you learn it from the seminary or any brother? Just like chicken. Just chicken Just and beautiful. Yeah. by itself or with other things? Chicken and veggies. Ah, nice. <laughs> Sounds good. Mm. Yeah, my go-to is probably like random leftovers or just, my mum's right, just putting things together. Mm. But yeah, if I had a go-to, it might be a safe option, might be fried rice or something, especially mm -hmm. if there's other people involved. Mm. Yep. You have a science background, so you normally like to explore anything, isn't it? Yeah, yeah in yeah. cooking. Experimentation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good yeah. on you. Yeah. <laughs> I might just add mm, yeah. that she is right, though. My I used to like cooking spaghetti. So oh, really? Yeah. She's, she's correct. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> All right. Mother's Day. Maybe bring flowers? Knowing Gerard, it probably would be flowers yeah. or pot plant and then some goodies. He knows I love pastries, so probably some exotic continental pastries <laughs> and perhaps some chocolate. Well, now I can't bring flowers. <laughs> <laughs> Got to bring something else now. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. And pastry for you, yeah. Yeah, oh, our family loves I don't know, yummy food and our, our whole family is a bit of like foodie family so yeah we love pastries. Um, finally enough, mum is going away for Mother's Day and her birthday so I already got her some flowers. She mm. was right. I, and I, at first I thought about flowers but the florist I went to, I don't know, they just were pretty average, pretty normal flowers so mm. I got her a, a small orchid mm -hmm. uh, and so that can it's probably the price of a bunch of flowers, but it'll live for longer than a bunch of flowers. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I remember one time uh, in Korea, we have a uh, parents' day, and then uh, for no reason, I got motivated to cook. Like, um, I don't know when, when but probably uh, when I turned like, uh, when I turned 
12 and then my mother's favorite uh, food is actually kimchi fried rice yeah mm -hmm. so I cooked with kimchi but it was very easy for kimchi to get burnt yeah so mm -hmm. some like uh, some parts is burnt but my mother like uh, just like uh, consume it uh, out of his uh, oh sorry her motherly love yeah <laughs> <laughs> Laughter. Mm. I think to be friendly and carry for other people. Laughter. Yeah, mm. my name means laughter. So mm. um, when I when it was revealed that the Sarah, I think it's Sarah, <laughs> would have a son, um, the response was laughter. Mm. So that's what my name means. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, laughter is something that I. A trait that I have. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty generous and I think I do get that from my mum and kind. She always goes out of her way to you know, help uh, international students um, with their English or um, help the old lady cross the road or with her groceries. So I think I've picked that up from mum. Yeah. Mm. Good, yeah. Yes, probably yes, because he's always cleaning his room and then he's always telling me that I need to clean up the kitchen and the pantry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, I like keeping my, mm. keeping my stuff clean. She's mm. right, yeah, mm. yep, spot on. I like cleaning to an extent, so my room right now is a mess. But it's either procrastinate cleaning, so cleaning to procrastinate, or um, cleaning after I've finished whatever big task that I'm doing. Um, so sometimes it's just a bit of an eyesore. If it's been too dirty for too long, for example, our pantry or our garage, then I'll just go ahead and clean it because it just frustrates me that it's all cluttered mm -hmm. and that it's hard to find the fishing rods or hard to find the, the chocolate that's all the way at the back. Mm -hmm. Chicken? Yeah. Oh, Gerard loves a variety of things. I think he would probably like like an authentic Malaysian Chinese meal. Chicken, yeah. We spoke about this. Yeah. Chicken. I've been listening in. Oh, definitely. Yeah, mother has always listened to us. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Mm. My, yeah, mm. favorite dish. I like a homestyle dish and it's called um, just a stir fried bean, stir fried green beans with uh, salted soybeans and garlic and it's and just with fresh steamed rice and it's just super yum a little bit of salt a little bit of greens and it's it just makes my day mm. yeah did you learn cooking those food from your mother a lot yeah my mum mm. every day she cooks dinner and I just was fascinated so I usually stood over her shoulder or stood on a chair and looked over her shoulder and watched her with the big wok and the big spatula and mm. um, yeah she was always slaving away at the kitchen she loves she has a big heart for hospitality so that's always fascinating for me oh beautiful to watch her cook mm. Saint Isaac to be honest I don't know but we name him Gerard after seeing Gerard because of the way he was born he was born at home I've only recently come to like Saint Isaac the Syrian mm -hmm. um, when I was doing research for like saints for the ordination card but um, so he is I guess one of my favorites but um, I guess my all-time favorite would be Saint Michael the Archangel oh okay yeah. mm. because he's got a big sword oh yeah that's not the only reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Guardian, yes. St. Gerard, yeah, I was born at home. I didn't make it to the hospital. Uh, so, yeah, St. Gerard Regella is the patron saint of mothers and expectant mothers. Mm. Uh, and also, my mum in hospital was visited by Sister Magella. Uh, and my birthday, yeah, so coincidentally, um, is very, like, a day before mm. um, St. Gerard's feast day as well. So yeah, all those few things collided mm. and my name is Gerard. Mm. 
Uh, but to think that my name could have been Noah or something is kind of hmm? scary. Oh, Noah, <laughs> yes. I think yeah. that was in the cards. Mm. Uh, my favorite saint is Blessed Pier Giorgio Frassati. Uh, yeah, he's a legend. He um, climbed mountains and evangelized his friends through creative ways, uh, through inviting them to church, but also making bets with them. So mm. if he'd say, if I lose this game of pool, this game of snooker, I'll give you money. If you lose, you have to come to adoration with me. Mm. And then um, the story goes that, you know, one day during holy hour, there's a whole row full of like scruffy young fellas that are filling up a pew because um, they all lost a game of snooker. So I think he's amazing. Mm. Mm. Cool. Good. Yeah. This is scary. Oh, a little bit of a mischief maker. Mm. Good answer. Gerard was very cheeky <laughs> and uh, cheeky. a very cheeky boy who likes to test the limits. So there was one year um, Gerard and Gabriel, our youngest, both um, sneaked behind us and went outside and got wet. And then they thought, oh, they, they came. <laughs> They came back through that back door, hilarious. You know, they were laughing their heads off and said, Mom, look at us, we got you this time. <laughs> How much did you make your mother in trouble? Seems oh, like. yeah, yeah. I don't even remember that, to be, <laughs> to be honest. But it sounds like something I would do. Yes. Because for so often, for so long, you know, when you get told to not play outside in the rain, you just want to do it. Um, and then finally, I think we got the chance or Mum was probably busy cooking or something and so we just snuck outside and did it and it was fun and they had nothing they couldn't do anything because we were already so drenched but it sounds like something I would do mm. yeah were you forgiven by your mother I hope so yeah is that good yeah <laughs> Isaac any Anything else to say on yours? Pretty spot on, really. Spot on, <laughs> yes, yes. No comments are needed. <laughs> oh, I want to hear stories. Yeah. <laughs> I think you'll be erring towards the shorter side. I would say probably medium. <laughs> That's pretty spot on. I don't think you should say what needs to be said in, mm. you know, 10 minutes when it can be said in three minutes, you mm. know, get your point across, mm. <laughs> make it, make it prompt, make it catchy, make it say what needs to be said and you know, move on. Sure, sure. No need yeah. to labour the point in my eyes. <laughs> Gerard, yeah. I like adding a few anecdotes or stories or ways to make uh, the gospel or scripture or faith um, relatable and applicable. So that's probably why I'd make it a little longer, mm. but not too long or probably seven to ten minutes tops. Yeah. Mm, yeah, not too long. It is the homily at which we show God's love, but we can show God's love by like us offering succinct homily, right? And not uh, putting too much like uh, uh, our own stories. Yeah. Uh, but I'm very lucky because my mother like uh, has no chance to listen to my homily, so she doesn't know. But one time I can show her my video. Yeah. You have to show her your Korean homily. Homily, yes, yes. Hopefully our parishioners don't hold us, mm. hold this up to us as evidence. Like, oh, you went too long. Mm. Mm. Right after. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I like to think that it's the Hail Mary. Mm. I don't really know either. Yeah. Um, so I guess she's right. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I think the Our Father, the Hail Mary, or mm -hmm. the um, prayer to Saint Michael would be the mm. top three. Um, I like the Jesus prayer. Um, mm. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I think that's a really good prayer because you can. It's it's something that you don't really have to think about mm. and you can say over and over even as you sort of in between conversations or having conversation with someone mm. so I, I, I use that throughout the day quite a lot um, but those four are the, the go-to's mm. I don't really have any favorites I do tend I do like praying the rosary and praying in divine mercy 
recently I've been saying a lot of just the guardian angel prayer before mm-hmm. uh, oh, once I wake up and before bed. So anyway, there are a few prayers that I say. Mm-hmm. Personally, I love uh, Divine Mercy chocolate. Yeah, so first of all, it doesn't take too much. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Secondly, I like mm-hmm. um, just the prayer itself, like asking and seeking uh, for God's mercy. Yeah, so I uh, really love that. Uh, apart from uh, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, I love um, Veni Creator Spiritus, um, which like um, invocation, about invocation of uh, Holy Spirit to the Holy Spirit. So I love uh, those prayers, mm. yeah. Okay. Holy Communion. Oh. It's probably confirmation because he's a bit older and you could probably understand the significance of that. We predicted, but we wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, communion is a good one. Yes. <laughs> but um, throughout my diaconal ministry, I've really fallen in love with, I know it's going to sound horrible, <laughs> but funerals. <laughs> I really, I really like funerals. I think, um, yeah, you get to minister to people that you don't usually get to minister to. Um, mm-hmm. There's people there that are, that are from all walks of life, um, from not, not, not even, you know, from outside your parish realm, um, and they're there because they're 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 searching. They're they're there to pay respects. Um, and I think you can make the most difference um, within funerals because everyone's there to listen. Everyone's there to 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 be respectful. And and if you do your funerals well, I think it makes a big difference in people's lives. Sure. Yeah. So I've fallen in love with um, yeah funerals. Mm, beautiful. Yes. I think my mum misheard the question and she thought what was my favourite sacrament. So she said confirmation because I was older mm. and because I'd probably remember it more, which I do love, you know. Mm. You get your the Holy Spirit stirred up within you and you take up the faith as your own, which was a very special moment mm. uh, in my <laughs> life. I do have a different favourite sacrament and that is the Holy Mass, the Holy Eucharist. Mm. And... Uh, just being able to partake in the body and blood of Christ, but mm. also be, as a future priest, be in persona Christi and be able to consecrate the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ and mm. to give that out to people physically is yeah very special to me and mm. I look forward to doing that in the future. Mm. Mm. I love uh, the baptism too because that is the very first sacrament we receive and then I have uh, presided over baptism only twice, but each time I became emotional even at the very beginning. Like, uh, oh, am I actually um, ready to welcome these uh, new babies? Like, mm-hmm. um, am I like, um, how can I like uh, be delegated by Christ to welcome them in the name of God? So yes, like uh, pouring baptismal water over babies, uh, has yeah, that's uh, definitely all uh, crucial and uh, meaningful. But I would say welcoming them first, showing hospitality, yeah, that was so crucial to me too. Mm. Did you pour lots of water? Oh, uh, like, uh, but thankfully, yes, on t- one time I did, but <laughs> that baby uh, smiled, didn't cry. So I thought <laughs> I he, he was really enjoying uh, getting our baptismal <laughs> water, and then uh, God was with me. Yeah, that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Izzy, mm. our children have their Christian names as well as their Chinese names. So all our three children are called by their Chinese names at home. So Gerard's Chinese name is Kin Ho. Kin Ho. Mm. Izzy. 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 Oh. What brought her to kind of call you or to think about your nickname like that? I don't know. Uh, it, it was just yeah. something that happened. Yeah. Oh, okay. But. Mum, I was in the backyard one day and mum was like, no, dad, mum was hanging out the clothes and dad was next to me and dad turned to me and said, okay, you're a man now. I was like, I was like seven years old. (laughs) (laughs) You're a man now. And because you're a man, we're not calling you Izzy anymore. I was like, 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> so that was <laughs> the end of Izzy. That was the end of it. Yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Gerard. Yeah, yeah. So my Cantonese name is Kinho, and I guess my sisters call me that, and my parents call me that. So as a nickname, they might call me Kini or Kini. Yeah. Mm. Little Kini. Little yeah. Kini. Um, but yeah, I get different nicknames. G. Geraldo, that sort mm. of thing, yeah. My mother used to, or oh, actually father too, used to call me like a little king oh. because I asked for like a more delicious food or like <laughs> I demanded a lot and then they got sick of that. So, oh, it seems like we are living with king or we are serving the little king, yeah. But they didn't call uh, that anymore Yeah, since um, when I entered the high school, which means I became a little bit like a mature, I think, yeah. We have a nickname for you at the seminary, Minjae. Yeah, what's that? Yeah, you told us in Korean that if we mispronounce your name, Minji, mm -hmm. that means little mouse or small mouse. So we like to call you yes. little mouse or mini mouse. Yeah, like um, it's still ongoing. Yeah, like uh, many parishioners, I understand. Uh, they <laughs> struggle to find a proper like a way to pronounce my name. So like a minje actually literally means like it means like a humble or small person or citizen. But if uh, they call me minji means like a small mouse, like uh, <laughs> my <laughs> essence like get changed. But don't worry, I'm still uh, humans, and that's why I get a call to the priesthood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A little red truck that mm. he had, and he used to fall asleep on it in the backyard. His um, favourite toy is Ernie, because Ernie started him off when he went to kindy for the first time, when he was two and a half. So Ernie was his friend, because he was such a shy boy for, I think, the first week. A little red truck and blue gumboots. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. Yep. And the red truck was good, because at when I had the red truck, my legs were just big enough to touch the ground like the Flintstones oh, and like yeah. push off on it. <laughs> um, so yeah, me and my red truck had good good times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Gerard? Ernie, so if you know Sesame Street, Ernie and Bert, I had a I was given a cute little plush toy of Ernie and he had like this cool zipper, this hoodie, this um, button up pocket. And I guess it was like a play toy, but also like he was my best friend, a little safe, mm. safe uh, toy to have. Then I could talk to him and make him, you know, drive in the car with me, put on his seatbelt. And he was my friend when I was lonely and I would talk to him and I put him in my bag at, at preschool and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was fun. I still have him actually. He's oh, on do my, you? He's on my shelf. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I really love a Toy Story series movie. So I used to uh, like... Uh, Buzz Lightyear uh, kind of small like a figure or something like that, but uh, it disappeared one time I don't know. Yeah, where it is, but I used to uh, have it a lot. Very sad. Oh, very sad. I lost the one friend. Terrible <laughs> <laughs> Yes, definitely mm. Yes, he is. However, sometimes the sisters find him really annoying <laughs> being a boy <laughs> But I think deep down they love him <laughs> mm. That's good <laughs> <laughs> How often do you call or like uh, communicate with your siblings? Yeah. Um, we, well one, one of my brother lives in Melbourne so we don't mm. see too much of mm -hmm. him mm. but um, my other brother and my sister um, catch up mm. fairly often which is good. Mm. We all get along now. Oh good. <laughs> mm. Yeah, me and my sisters get along pretty well too. Yeah, being the only boy, uh, I used to just push the boundaries a little bit and mm. tease them or look in their, like, I don't know, um, hair accessory cupboard and steal things and, um, yeah, just be mischievous. Um, yeah, that sort of thing. But then also, they were mischievous to me too. They, like, mm. tried on girl clothes on me and all this like uh, they made me give them massages and stuff so mm. um you know it was mutual we were all annoying to each other <laughs> <laughs> yeah like um every weekend i uh 
normally uh, try to call uh, my sister to check on her and then she sometimes uh, calls me too uh, and then we are best friend to each other and then I definitely sense that she uh, gives me a lot of support and uh, towards my journey. Unfortunately, she can't come to my ordination, but still at our priestly ordination, we can see how we, how much we close to our mm. own sibling. Yeah, mm. let's find out, yeah. <laughs> the day he found his purpose. Yeah, yeah, it was life changing for everybody. It would be for them to complete um, little projects or things that they have aimed for. That's kind of why we're here, really, isn't it? Sure, exactly. <laughs> yeah. To find your purpose, to find your, however you want to describe purpose, to find your purpose, goal, vocation, um, way in life. That's 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 why we're all here. Um, mm -hmm. And it's life. If everyone. If everyone found their purpose or vocation, you know, the world would look a very, in, look a very different way. Um, mm -hmm. Finding your purpose not only changes yourself, but your family, your community, mm. circle, your entire circle of influence is, is completely changed through finding your purpose. Mm. Um, and that's, you know, one of the reasons why I want to become, well, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want to become a priest is to help other people find their purpose, mm -hmm. lead them, their purpose through Christ, really. Mm. Yeah, definitely, awesome. yeah. yeah. And our parents of our first formator, yeah, we are our own formator for ourselves, but also parents were delegated by God the first time mm -hmm. to, you know, uh, uh, form our pastoral vision or to, you know, shape our own way to, you know, deliver God's love. Yes, yeah, certainly we can remember our parents, you know, crucial role. Mm. Mm. What about Gerard? Yeah. Yeah, so my mom said when I finish tasks, mm. and I think that's true, yeah, I'm pretty happy to have that weight mm. lifted off your shoulders mm. when you finish writing a homily or mm -hmm. when you finish assignments or I don't know when you just finish something it just feels good to have that done and to tick a box so yeah that's just spot on there mm -hmm. loving kind gentle authentic and real Gerard can be a bit of a perfectionist um, but at the same time he can also be very fun loving and friendly over your seminary journey you sort of get a grasp of what these character personality traits are um, that's that's the nature of the seminary but it's interesting at least in my my journey is that i was never those things um yeah i was never loving never kind mm -hmm. <laughs> um it, it's something that I had to uh, essentially learn um, mm. and develop um, their, their, their personality traits that I saw as good, that I saw as virtuous, mm. that I saw as righteous and truth, um, mm. that held truth. And I had to pursue that and, and attain those, um, those personality traits. Mm. Um, so, it's interesting to hear that they're, <laughs> mm. you know, some of the things that I pos possess now. So mm. that's really touching to hear. Mm. What did my mum say? She said perfectionist and mm. kind or something? Yeah, and they like fun. fun oh, like, fun, loving. Yeah, fun okay. Loving, yeah. So perfectionist, yeah, I like, I think I have a high standard of myself. So I probably, one experience. Yeah, expect myself to reach that and expect other people to do that too. Uh, and then secondly, fun loving because uh, I just love adventure, loving, love seeing new things or trying new things or exploring new places that gives me joy, gives me life. So that's pretty accurate. Mm. Mm. Yeah, always I feel like I'm real, um, at least before my mother because she has already found 
yeah, what sort of worry I have or like uh, what kind of job I have. One time I was in trouble with uh, one friend at high school and then I came back home and then she realized that something bad happened or something not too good had happened but I didn't explain what <laughs> it was but she had, had already understood how like a uh, tough I like um, you know I, I was yeah at mm. that emotion so she tried to like understand me and then console me yes definitely I can be always real uh, before my parents yes He's been my son's good friend. Like a big brother to Gerard, and yet they're such great friends and they're really good for each other. And I think they complement each other in so many ways. Somehow I can't help but think, you know, like how when one plays up and then the other one will say, hang on a minute. <laughs> Do you agree? <laughs> you agree with your? I think mom, mm. all mothers are genuine. I yeah, think, yeah, yeah, yeah. no yeah, mothers are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that question. <laughs> but yeah, what did, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. I agree. Mm, I think, mm, um, mm. I think we complement each other well. Mm. We're all very different, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we trust each other. So mm. <laughs> if someone says something about. Mm the other person it's it's from a place of love so i think uh yep that's right yeah mm -hmm. yeah i think minje you're a good friend and i do see you as a, a brotherly figure so mm. my mum was correct there mm. and i think as good friends and brothers do they pull each other in line if they're out of line and mm. we call each other to greatness call each other to mm. holiness and that's what I love about our friendship. Mm, yeah, like I love to hear complimentary. Like uh, also, I have got a lot of you know um, complimentary things or good things from uh, your support. Definitely, I think it's a mutual things. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I need <laughs> his choice of career mm. very grounded. He's mature and. He amazes me because he has learned English so well in a, you know, in a relatively short span of time, and he spends a lot of time trying to really improve himself. I I would say you've got a good choice of career as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, definitely, yeah, all good, yeah. I agree, mm. and I think. The same as my mum, I think that, yeah, you've done incredibly well for yourself, especially mm. in learning the language, learning the culture. Mm. It's not easy going to another country, let alone going to another country to live and to understand their culture and to complete your whole, the rest mm. of your life there, to complete your vocation there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, hats off to you, Min Jae. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Mum did really well. She mm. answered. She answered pretty accurately. Um, although I still think I can be a good cook if I <laughs> put my mind to it. Um, she got the chicken spot on. Yeah, she was mm. so good. Mm. Um, mm. We're all really lucky to have mm. the mothers that we do, mm. um, that we have to love and support us on this on this journey, um, mm. and. Not only do I want to say Happy Mother's Day to my mum, Alicia, but Happy Mother's Day to all those mothers out there that mm. put in those hard yards and the unseen tasks and, mm. and all that, that stuff behind the scenes to, to make families and systems and companies mm. and the world a better place. Mm. Happy Mother's Day. Mm. Our mums were, my mum was spot on. Our mums are pretty spot on. Uh, there's probably a few things that have changed since we've moved out of home or mm. since we've lived in the seminary, but you know, 95% was mm. pretty much accurate. And yeah, yeah, she, they just know us so well. Mm. Um, yeah, I like the comment about some, um, yeah, personality and, and my favorite toy and things like that. Some, some of the things that you forget that your, mm. your qualities are or that you forget a, a funny childhood moment, but mm. your mum remembers because that's what mums do. Mm. So yeah, I wanted to echo 
Isaac's sentiments uh, to all mums and motherly figures. Happy Mother's Day. And thanks for all that you do. Thanks for your support. Mm. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks for all the stuff you do behind the scenes. You you know drive us to sport. You cook us meals. You wash our stuff. You, mm. you see us at our highs, highs and our lows. And uh, we really appreciate all that you do. Most importantly, thanks for giving birth to us. So mm. <laughs> thanks, mums. Good on mm. you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, all mothers uh, definitely uh, give us unconditional love, uh, which uh, normally Jesus gives. Um, but in many ways, like one of which maybe even sacrifice, probably mm. like uh, our mothers may not have mentioned like uh, the sac some sacrifices she or each one of us, um, each one of our mothers made. But we always conscious of our motherly love, out of which we can um, be real who we are and that we can accept any God's mission, you know, happily. Yeah, so thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you all mothers, uh, especially Isaac's mothers and then Jorah's mother and said, now and uh, we are living in new family, so you all are mm -hmm. our mothers too. Thank you. Mm -hmm.